Charlie and today I'm going to do a video on traveling, teaching and living abroad and where to start. I get a lot of questions from people asking where should they start, um, what do they look for when trying to travel and so I'm going to give you guys a couple of questions to ask yourself when trying to figure out where to travel, um, how to travel and things like that and where you should go, how to pick a place and all of that kind of stuff. So. First, I the question. First, I want to tell you guys get a notebook. Um, it can be any kind of notebook. This is my notebook, and I use it for to-do lists and all that kind of stuff. Um, kind of multi-purpose notebook. That way, I can have all my information in one spot. Um, the next thing you need to do is ask yourself how long do you have. The first, the reason that's the, your first question is because maybe um, you only have a week to travel or maybe you have a month to travel, maybe you have a year where you can just take off and travel or maybe you have no time limits to um, where you have nothing holding you back from going. Um, so time is a very important thing because you know you don't want to pick a place that's super far that's going to take most of your time on planes um, if you only have a week. So first thing is first, figure out how much time you have. For myself, for example, I don't have anything holding me back. I'm free to travel as long as I want. So um, I can pick a place anywhere. Um, the next thing to do is pick a place. And I'm gonna tell you how to pick a place, but that's um, the main thing is figuring out where you're gonna go once you figure out how long you have to go. Um, so f the next thing is to pick a place and the reason you want to pick a place is because you can't go anywhere unless you figure out where you're gonna go first. <laughs> okay, so um, the way to pick a place is not necessarily um, what you think is cool, like oh I think it's cool to be in Korea so I'm just gonna go to Korea. Um, there's a lot of people who watch my videos and want to go to Korea, but um, there's many reasons to go different places and um, I'm gonna give you a list of things for example food do you have a picky diet do you um, not eat certain things maybe there's a certain place you want to go but the food is um, not to your liking or something like that I'm not saying pick the place just for the food but that is an aspect that you want to incorporate into your list um, also what is the weather like maybe you don't like cold weather but you want to go to somewhere that is cold um, so you kind of have to figure out do you want to compromise what you like for what you don't like and things like that um, also things like weather, all of that kind of stuff, what's the weather like during the time you're going. So that's kind of how you can start to pick a place. Um, do you like the language? Do they speak your language? Do you want to learn another language? Things like that. So picking a place is at the top of your list. Maybe you can pick a few places that you would like to go and things like that. So the next thing is, I'm reading my notes. <laughs> Um, how can I get there? The reason you want to figure out how you're gonna get there is because there's not just one way to travel. You can travel by boat, you can travel by plane, you can do a road trip, you can figure out many different ways to travel. Maybe there are other people where you want to do a road trip together and travel somewhere um, far but doing it by road trip or by train or something like that. Uh, the next thing um, is, oh you can also do like a uh, boat tour or something like that, you know. Uh, let's see. The next thing is visa requirements. You need to find out if you can just show up and be on a like a tourist visa, for example. Can you show up or do you have to plan ahead? Do you have to take care of your visa before you leave um, your own country? What are the needed... What are the... What is needed for you to travel there regarding your visa? So, also, if you arrive as a tourist, can you change your visa to a teaching or work visa while you're there? Um, a lot of people who watch my videos are interested in teaching abroad, and that's another aspect that you need to ask yourself when picking a place to travel. Do you want to go there? Um, to just travel and have adventures? Do you want to go there to live? Do you want to go there to find work? 
what are your reasons for traveling because you have to take that into account when you're searching for your visa some places you can go there be a tourist and then get your visa your um, work visa while you're in the country some places you cannot do that you have to take care of your visa before you leave your hometown the next thing is what are the teaching requirements some of you are there to teach or would like to go to teach some of you would like to go for work maybe you want to be a dancer or something and you want to know how to become a dancer in like as for work or I don't know you want to be a bartender or you want to be a singer and you want to figure out what are their work requirements um, not only for your visa but what does it take to get that kind of job in that country um, I'm gonna say this now Google is your best friend <laughs> um, that you can find some bad information on Google but you can also find some really good information on Google and the reason I'm saying this is because people are so um, in a rush and like on crack <laughs> to send messages and trying to get information you know um, I get a lot of messages like how much is the pay in Korea and that's something you can easily find out if you do a quick Google search what is the average pay in this country um, so don't panic that's the first thing don't panic you will be okay <laughs> um, Google really does help in finding out basic information on different things that you are curious about so you can do a quick Google search on what are the teaching requirements, what are the requirements for your visa, um, any type of thing that any question that you have is really easily answered through Google, but you need to use your best judgment on the information provided because my hair is on crack too. Um, because if you go to teaching forums, for example, I'm using teaching as an example because that's kind of the route I'm going when I'm traveling is teaching. And when you're looking for a job through Google, if you find a website for teaching, for example, and you wanna find out what people's opinions are on teaching in a certain country, you have to keep in mind what people's intentions are. For example, um, a teaching website is eslcafe.com. You guys can write that down in your notebooks. Um, that's a place where there's teaching references or guides, teaching ideas, um, and all of that kind of stuff. And if you go to the area where people write down their experiences, this website is specifically for Asia, I believe. China, Korea, etc. But don't forget there's other places besides Japan, China, and Korea in Asia. <laughs> um, but if you go to these websites, you will find a lot of complaints. And I'm saying this because you have to keep in mind that people usually don't post until they have something to complain about. So when looking on these websites, it's easier to find complaints than there are to find good things because usually when something good is happening to you, you don't go and write it on a website. Usually when something horrible is happening to you, you want to complain about it, make a lot of noise, tell a lot of people about it, and so you're usually more tempted to go to those websites to complain than to give a good reference kind of thing. For example, um, I try to do my best in giving both sides the story on my YouTube channel. Um, I try to post the good and the bad, but I try to keep it mostly good because I'm more about being positive. So keep that in mind when you're doing your Google searches. Now back to the topic. What are the, the requirements for doing that specific job? The next thing is, um, let's see, I'm sorry, I'm going through my notes and okay. The next thing is, do you need a degree? Do you need a agree, agree? <laughs> Do you need a degree to work there? Um, this is another part of the visa requirement. In order to get your visa in certain countries for work, you need a degree depending on the field that you're going into. Um, so, do you need a degree? Do you need a certificate? Can a certificate um, be sufficient without the degree? things like that. Will you benefit to get, for example, a TESOL certificate if you're going into teaching? You can look up different things in the Google search. Is it beneficial for me to get a teaching certificate or a certain certificate in a certain area depending on what field you're going into? Um, can you get a job while you're there or is it better to 
go online, try and find a recruiter or find a job before you get there. What is it? Sometimes, you know, for example, some places it's easier to get a job once you're there because they're more on, they work more as a culture on a personal level. Or is it easy to get a job online? Is it better that way? Um, things like that. better to contact the school before you get there, um, consider all the visa requirements. Is there a lot of job availability in that country? Is there a big demand? This is a very big or important thing because maybe you're going there to find a job and the job type that you're looking for is not in demand in that area. So maybe you want to change locations or change the reason you're going. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of people want to go to Korea, but they don't for one, have a degree, they don't have any teaching certificates, they don't have any experience, um, but they really want to go to Korea. So if, for example, in Korea, you need a degree to teach there, um, there are there is one program um, I talked a lot in my videos about that you can go without a degree, but with a little experience. Um, but there's some people who don't have that experience who still want to go to Korea or there's people who want to go to a specific country and don't want to work. So you can change your reason for going. Say, okay, you know what, I really want to go to this country but I can't get a job right now there. So I'm going to go to travel and explore. Uh, the next thing is, is, let's see. Okay, so going back to the demand. If there is not a demand in that country, um, maybe you can still find a job even though there's not a huge demand for it. You also have to consider that if there's not a demand for it, you might not be getting paid a lot. So you have to consider how much you're trying to make in the process of traveling or going to another country. Um, is there a big demand for bilinguals? For example, if you want to go to France um, and get a job, is it better that you speak French? I always say yes. Even if you don't need it on the job, I always say it's a good thing to learn the language if you're going to another country. To me, it just makes sense. <laughs> the next thing you want to do is ask what living is like. How is living in that country? For example, what is the cost of living um, for housing, for food, for fun? Um, are there adventures? What kind of adventures do you like? Do you like exciting things? Do you like very calm things? Do you like um, meeting people? For example, there are certain countries where um, to meet people and make friends, you have to be very outgoing. And then there's some places where you um, can easily make friends without being super outgoing. And I don't really know what I'm talking about right now. So let me get back on track. <laughs> um, what is the community atmosphere like? This goes back to kind of being outgoing. What is the community like in that country? For example, in Korea, there's a big drinking culture, but you don't really have to drink to make friends, but you have to keep in mind that drinking is a big part of making friends and being comfortable with people, including in the workplace. Um, after work, there's a big drinking culture. Also, um, like for example, if you're not a big, um, you have to consider like a lot of culture is surrounded by food so if you're not big on eating random things you have to keep in mind being culturally sensitive and things like that um, so what is the community atmosphere like do you like to go out and party or do you like very calm nature-based things do you like and for example in different countries you can find a whole lot of things you can find you can find the party scene and you can find the nature scene. So you want to kind of keep into, into consideration what kinds of things you can find in that area. But for example, for me, I used to not like to party. Now I enjoy partying, but I also prefer a more nature-based um, society, for example. <laughs> I like um, being out in nature being more calm. I like tea shop settings. <laughs> I like um, park settings. I like forests and oceans and beaches and things like that. So when I'm traveling, I'm going to keep that into consideration. Um, also, um, what is the weather like? 
this is all in the aspect of what is living like in that country so what is the weather like I personally love cold weather I love um, breezy wind I like rain I like snow I like things like that so i to going to places like that but I'm very open for example the Sun is very nice and right now it's sunny here in California and I love this weather too so I'm kind of like I can go anywhere and be happy kind of person so I'm very open um, to that I don't like really humid weather um, in the summertime in Korea for example it's very humid and I'm not a happy camper <laughs> um, the next thing that I have the last thing that I have on my list is what is the dress like um, you need to consider what kind of clothes you like to wear um, when you're traveling or when you're just out for example in your own town what do you typically wear because um, you have to consider the culture in your dress um, you don't want to go out in super short things if that culture does not is not attuned to that kind of dress you don't want to go out with your chest all hanging out if that's not the culture <laughs> so being culturally sensitive is very important um, and picking your location so those are some tips on how to figure out um, what to do when searching what to search for when looking into traveling um, it's important to figure out how much time you have how long you're staying what kind of means you're gonna travel by boat by plane how much money do you have to travel um, things like that before picking a place and going there um, the reason I decided to make this video is because you guys know I'm in the process of figuring out where I'm going I already picked a place and I'm very open to going anywhere I want to go everywhere um, but in picking a place I decided to um, write down some ideas for you guys um, because I'm going through the same thing as you guys at the moment and the Sun is going down and so I'm trying to fix my lighting um, I'm going through the same things as you guys which I went through before I left my home to go to Korea and when I left I didn't go crazy asking a bunch of people what to look for I just did quick searches which are very helpful I didn't ask anybody if I should go or anything because I don't really listen to people <laughs> and so I did a lot of searching on the internet um, how to get there um, and things like that because I like to do my own research and stuff so yeah I hope you guys are doing great I hope this is helpful and I'll see you guys later bye if you're really spontaneous like myself you can pick a place figure out the visa requirements and just go and figure out everything else once you get there. See you guys later.